There aren't very many of these unpaired evidence questions on the SAT, maybe one or two per test, but not a big deal. Weird does not mean hard, it's just different. Um, and with these especially, it's important that we understand the question really, really well. So uh, this is an example of how, how dumb summaries can really help us in lots of ways. Most of the time that I use this strategy in these videos, I'm looking at the lines in the passage and I'm summarizing them in a very dumb way thinking about connotation, thinking about you know, repeated words. However, we can summarize a question in a dumb way too. right? Our goal is just to understand very simply what's going on. The SAT's goal, a lot of times, is to complicate things so that it's harder to understand and it's harder to get the right answer because you don't know what they want. So if you sense that a question has multiple layers or is kind of confusing, pause yourself for one second and just kind of turn it into something simple. So what are they saying? A student claims that nitrogenous bases pair randomly with each other, with one another. So bases pair randomly. Literally, that's all I care about. Which of the following statements in the passage contradicts the student's claim? So right now, I'm going to stop reading this question and turn it into my own question. What do I want? I want to say the bases or base pairs not random. Right? If it contradicts that claim, it's going to say that it's not random. So I don't care about the question that they asked me. It's too confusing. But I have my own question now. And my own question is much simpler. And it's a simpler idea that I can hold in my brain as I read these complicated line references. The other thing I'll point out is that these kind of line references tend to um, spread out in the passage. And so I'm always mindful of the chronology rule. Are my answers in order? They're supposed to be. And so looking at the next question, I see that lines 12 to 19 are what matter. So with that in mind, there's a clear demarcation. And these choices up here seem like they're more likely to be right, and these ones less likely. Because question 24 should come after Question 23, right, in the chronology, in the answers in the pa of the, the answer or the line reference for 24 should come after the answer for number 23. Okay, so that means I'm leaning towards A and B. Let's see if the chronology rule holds up. It only works about 85% 85, 85 of the time, so sometimes it gets broken. Let's look at lines 5 through 6 and see if there's anything that says base pairs are not random. Okay, so what do they say? Uh, 5 through 6. To each sugar is attached a nitrogenous base, which can be of four different types. Well, that doesn't say that they're random or not random. It just says that there's four different types. So if anything, it maybe implies that they're random because it doesn't specify that there's certain things that need to happen. So this is not supporting my dumb summary here. 9 through 10, um, right here. So far as is known, the sequence of bases along the chain is irregular irregular. Now, that means not regular. And so that seems to contradict what choice B is saying, right? So not regular, right? Not regular is the same as random, right? Something's regular. It's, it's in an order. It's ordered. So if it's not ordered, it's random. So this doesn't match, right? This actually supports what the student is saying, but that's not our task. Remember, we rephrased our task. Our task is to contradict the student. So here's a trap. Clear and simple, this is a trap. And if we catch it, now look what happens. We've eliminated the two choices that the chronology rule uh, suggested was going to be right. So here's a good example of why I like the chronology rule, even though it gets broken from time to time. I have no doubt that A and B are wrong, right? If I were on the fence and I had to guess on this question randomly, I would have guessed randomly A or B because the chronology rule makes it seem like those are going to be right. But I'm not guessing randomly on most questions, right? I have some idea. So if I'm stuck, the chronology rule is, a, is the best bet we can make. It's not a guarantee, but it's the best bet. Sometimes they break it. And a lot of times when they break it, we are so confident that it's broken that we don't care that it's broken, right? I know that C or D has to be right here because A and B were so bad. B is a clear trap, so you might have picked it, but it's, it is the opposite of what we're looking for here. So let's go to C. 
23 to 25, that is here. Uh, the bases are joined together in pairs, a single base from one chain being hydrogen bonded to a single base from another. Well, that doesn't seem random, not random. They're just throwing some science garbage at me. So maybe you're confused and you keep that in, but it doesn't seem to say anything about randomness. 27, 29, hope this is right. One member of a pair must be a purine and the other a pyrimidine in order to bridge between the two chains. So that word must is doing a lot of work here telling us that it's not random because one thing must be with another thing. So there we go. And I think that that word must was easier to notice when we had summarized our question in a more understandable way. So that's what we want to do. And that is, I think, different than some other advice that people give, which is to summarize the passage in a thorough way. I do not think that that is necessary. We want to have simple ideas. Simple ideas are easy to find and to notice. So uh, that's what we did in this question. And then in the lines, we were able to, you know, kind of blow past a lot of the science to get to the idea of randomness. That's what they're really asking about. They're not asking about DNA. They're not asking about nitrogenous bases. They're asking about randomness. And the one word must in choice D is enough for us to know that they're talking about randomness there. A lot of stuff going on in this question. It's a hard passage but really great question to talk about some great SAT strategies that will help on every type of passage.